A few months ago, Atlassian introduced a new way to format tables in Confluence. Now, if you've been using Confluence for a while now, you know that tables, they're definitely no Excel killer. You can basically organize your data and you can do a couple of different things, but the table functionality within Confluence has been very, very lackluster. Now, today we're gonna to be taking a look at that new update. Again, it's, this is from really from April, but I'm finally catching up on my backlog and I thought I'd make this video to walk you through all the different options that you have when it comes to formatting tables in Confluence because a lot of people do use these tables to organize your data and it's important for you to understand what is and isn't quite possible and try to understand the rules and the limitations of using tables within Confluence. So let's jump into a Confluence page. Let's get a table going and see what we're able to do. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down below as I have links to my merch store, my courses, and more importantly, links to my sponsors that help make these videos possible. Let's jump into Confluence. Don't want to sleep in because I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. All right, so here I am in Confluence. I just have a page. I'm gonna click edit here. This will work whether you're creating a brand new page or you're editing an existing page. And all that you need to do, most importantly, is add a table. Now to add a table in Confluence, you come up here to the macros and you'll notice that you have a table macro. So all you gotta do is click on this and there's your table. Now this little bar down here, this is what is new. There's a couple of cool new things that again, previously didn't really exist or they just existed in a very wonky way. And so Atlassian has revamped this entire formatting section here and has made it way more streamlined and way more user intuitive and more powerful than before. Now keep in mind, this is still not gonna be any Excel killer. There, you're not gonna be able to do all the amazing and cool things that you can do inside of Excel, but it's as close as I'm gonna be able to get you to an Excel-like experience without having to leave Confluence. So let's take a look at this table and see what we can do and play around with these formatting options. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let me take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. How do you ensure all of your documents and Confluence go through the right processes or reach the right stakeholders before they're finished? After all, every document is different and you may need a slightly different process for each one. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Introducing Workflows for Confluence. It's an all-in-one document management tool that allows you to build powerful document workflows with custom page statuses, approvals, unique document versioning, and integrated publishing controls. Check out the link in the description down below to get started. Now back to the video. So right out of the gate, you have your header. Now it might be hard to see in this video because I'm in dark mode, but this area here is a different shade and it is a header. So if you ever wanted to change that, you can now click on these table options and you can either select the header row or you can get rid of it. So now it's just a regular table, but if you wanted that header row, maybe you want a header column, you can very easily just click on these here. And now I've made it a header column. If I wanted to change it back to a header row and a header column, I can do that. Or you can even do a numbered column, which will give you numbers down the side. And as you add more rows, you'll notice that we get different numbers. So this is a really cool thing. Again, table options right here. You can do all three, you can mix and match, do whatever feels right for you and whatever you need. As you can see, you can play around with those and have that very, very simple and intuitive table options. Now this I think is enhancement number one, something that again, just helps you organize your data ever so slightly so that you can communicate more effectively with a better looking Excel table. Now let's keep exploring these formatting options and let's see what else is possible. So now that we covered table options, let's go to the cell options. So these are gonna be manipulations of the actual cell itself. Now in the cell, you notice that you have this little drop down arrow, which is what you used to have before, but you also have this here, which is basically the same menu, but it's just again, organized in a more intuitive way. So here we can add columns to the right, rows below, we can delete the entire column, we can delete the entire row. Um, we can also, if we highlight a couple of cells, and go to merge options, we can do merge cells. And if we have a cell that's merged already, we can just select it and then split the cell, bring it back. Uh, we can also distribute columns, which I'm not even sure how to do that, but we'll see if we figure it out later. We can also sort the columns from A to Z or from Z to A, 
or we can just clear this out. Again, not really going to be Excel killer features. These are basics 101 if you've ever used an Excel like tool, but it's nice that you can do all this stuff inside of consoles as well, because sorting is probably one of the key things that you do. And so it's awesome that again, it's all centralized, really, really easy to do, really easy to manipulate that table. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of functionality missing here. You're not able to do like a filter like you can inside of Confluence. So Atlassian, definitely still a lot of room for improvement here, a lot of room to make this table look and feel a little bit more for, like Confluence and give our users even less of a reason to have to leave Confluence to use a different tool. Trust me, I don't wanna be sending my users over to Excel. I wanna keep everybody collaborating and interacting inside of Confluence. So at last and please, if you're listening, we need more Excel-like functionalities in these tables. Specifically, filters would be really, really cool. Now, another thing that we can do here is we now have the cell background so we can change the colors of these cells. Obviously, my dark mode makes this demo a little bit harder to see, but if I use these like more purple, um, bolder colors, you can see that it works a little bit better. I can also insert charts here. So this is a, a really cool feature. I'm able to bring in some charts. I have some chart options. Um, we can change the type of chart. We don't have a whole lot of options. Again, Excel is going to give you all kinds of stuff. You're going to be able to have like pivot tables and all that great stuff. So Atlassian, let's just go, let's go steal some of those functionalities out of Excel and let's just bring them right into Confluence because I'm telling you that people want it. And if you do really want it, make sure you smash that like button on this video so that I can then really go tell Atlassian that you all really want it. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let me take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. How do you ensure all of your documents and Confluence go through the right processes or reach the right stakeholders before they're finished? After all, every document is different and you may need a slightly different process for each one. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Introducing Workflows for Confluence. It's an all-in-one document management tool that allows you to build powerful document workflows with custom page statuses, approvals, unique document versioning, and integrated publishing controls. Check out the link in the description down below to get started. Now back to the video. So we have bars, we have lines, we have pies, again, super simple stuff, nothing, nothing to like, go crazy about, but you're still able to do some of this data. Now, some of the other things that we have is we manage connected data. Now this right here is a little bit more advanced. I'm not 100% sure what this is yet. I'm gonna explore this a little bit more, maybe make a different video, but I do know that Atlassian is working on something called Confluence Databases. Now this is something that I saw back at the Atlassian conference in April of 2023. And I'm really hoping that Atlassian releases this database capability because over the summer I did a video where I compared Confluence against Notion and one of the great things about Notion and one of the, the reasons why people go to Notion over Confluence is that so Notion gives you this power to use this da database as a table and then be able to use it anywhere else in Notion and that type of functionality is coming to Confluence. I just wish it got here a little bit faster. So at last time you're listening again, we want that EAP as ASAP and we want this functionality for databases on the quick. So, hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let me take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. How do you ensure all of your documents and Confluence go through the right processes or reach the right stakeholders before they're finished? After all, every document is different and you may need a slightly different process for each one. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Introducing Workflows for Confluence. It's an all-in-one document management tool that allows you to build powerful document workflows with custom page statuses, approvals, unique document versioning, and integrated publishing controls. Check out the link in the description down below to get started. Now back to the video. I think that's, this is what might be related to it, but I will need to investigate a little bit more. I've never really used this connected data before, but we'll keep an ear out on that. The other thing that we can do is we can copy data and then we can remove the whole table. So this is just gonna delete everything um, and make it really easy to just trash things out. So that's pretty much it for this video. This is just some of the, again, how to format your table a little bit more, add a little bit of color, add a little bit of pizzazz. Clearly we're still missing a lot of key functionality that is gonna make us want to not use Excel, but it's nice that we now have a less wonky experience when working with tables. And I, for one, I'm welcome to this functionality. Again, still wishing it was even more powerful, but we'll take what we get. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you made it this far and you haven't smashed that subscribe button, you might wanna hit that subscribe button right about now. Don't forget to check out the links down in the description below as those are for my sponsors and all the different ways that you can help support the channel. And so check out the courses, merch store, and of course, try out the plugins 
for the sponsors that make these videos possible. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. So fight and